experience the highs and lows of the inspiring success stories we highlight. Allow the experiences and the examples of our guests to lift and inspire you out of the past or future. Hi everyone, this is Jennifer Annenberg and welcome to the Jennifer Now Show. We have a wonderful guest as usual for you. Um, but before I start, I have to thank our wonderful host at the Celestial. If you haven't been to the Celestial lately, please come. It is a wonderful treat. The skyline is fabulous. Of course, today we have a little bit of fog, but nonetheless, it is still enchanting as ever. So please come to the Celestial. If you or anyone else has a wonderful skyline or a view, please go to jennifernow.com and invite us to your wonderful skyline or event or wonderful area, and we'd be happy to host our show. Again, uh, back to our host um, and our show. We have a wonderful guest for you. Some call her feisty, some call her a legend. Nonetheless, she has so much to offer. It's our very own, Cincinnati's very own, Martha Lunkin. Thank you for coming, Martha. Thank you for asking me, Jennifer. And I have to say, my first question is, and people may not know this, at age nine, you wanted to fly and you actually flew, and it's called an air coupage or air? Help me with this. I will. <laughs> Help me with it. It's a low-winged plane, I know that. Yes, it's a, it's a very, very tiny low-wing airplane. Yes. It's, it's almost a cold airplane these yes. days. But it's it, beautiful. It's I saw it online. Yeah, it's, it's gorgeous. It's fun. It's fun, fun and funny. Uh, and it's unique in that it isn't, doesn't have the same controls that most airplanes do. But yeah. we'll get into that. Um, yeah, I, I grew up on the west side of Cincinnati, and uh, there were no airports, and I didn't know anyone who flew. But I, I became fascinated with airplanes. and, and um, uh, I was nine, I think I was I mean, nine. Nine, nine. Yeah. <laughs> and I decided, uh, yes, that's, I'll do that. I, I want to do that. Mar most, of, most of us are playing with Legos. You were, fa you were going out and flying, or what, what no, was it? No, I, I had never been in an airplane. And in fact, I didn't get into an airplane until my first flying lesson, which was, uh, you know, eight years later, nine years later. Wow. So, um, but I learned everything I could about it, and... And as I said, I didn't know anyone who flew. Nobody in my family flew. Wow. But I met a priest in high school who right. owned part of an airplane. Okay. And he would, he would talk to me about it. So, so this was enough to spark. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. And I think I would have kept it anyway. I was just determined to do it. Absolutely. And, and I'm lots of things, but determined is one, one of them. <laughs> yes. And then what happened? So you saw the, this priest inspired you by having a piece of an airplane, but then how well, did A go to B? Um, I was in college and I was working part-time selling women's sportswear at Mabley and Crew, which is no longer uh, to put myself through school. And um, I think I had accumulated maybe $200. So I called Father Blomey and said, um, I have enough money for flying lessons. Where should I go? And Bill Blomey said, um, let me call you back. And when he called back, he said, you know, Father Porter and I own that airplane, and nobody's using it. Why don't you learn to fly in the air coop? And, you know, you'll have to pay for the gas and the instructor. So um, that was large, you know. Big. And um, so I would go out to Lunkin Airport to take these flying lessons. Now, that was a little bit logistically in those days. It was the early 60s. I would take the bus to town, and actually I was going to what was then Villa Madonna College in Covington. Okay. So at the Dixie Terminal, you know, there was a big decision. Should I go to school or should I take the Eastern Avenue bus out to <laughs> Lunkin Airport? And, and by this time, it, there was an airport. This was Lunkin Airport, oh, established yes. Lunkin Airport. In fact, Lunkin Airport's been there since 1920, probably 1923 That's good for or people four. to know. Okay, yeah. yes. Um, so anyway, I... I did this in like February through May and got a private license. Unbelievable. Never stopped. Unbelievable. Th I mean, for people who know, this is not an easy task to do. And you did it alone without any, I mean, your parents sort of just said, oh, okay, well, your ma we bless I you. A, <laughs> I have a sister who's four years older and she decided she would learn too. Wow. She was already teaching. So we learned together and Mary and I both got private private pilot licenses. She didn't continue, mm -hmm. uh, you know, beyond that. But she still flies with me and loves to fly. But in, in fact, no, at home it was difficult because we, we were all pumped up about, about, you know, 
aviation and reading Wolfgang Langwish and stick and rudder and working whiz wheels and learning how to compute. And wow. finally, I remember one night at the dinner table, my father slammed his hand down and said, that is enough airplane talk. We will have no more airplane talk in wow. this house. So I even forged my parents' signature on my solo uh, certificate because in those days, if you were under, I think, 21, you had to have sure. parental permission. Sure. So, you know, I'm not sure to this day if I truly have a valid pilot Martha, you're hysterical, <laughs> and yet she, I mean, you do check rides, you teach, you have this, uh, I mean, flying, tra I mean, this training school well, sometimes is amazing. Sometimes they say those who those who can do those who can't teach. I I try to make I try to keep a combination of both. I fly lots uh, of flight checks, flight tests. I do yes. a lot of that. But I try to fly. I own an airplane and I fly it myself. I fly for fun. If I don't have anything to do, I think what do I do? I'll go. I'll go fly. So well, for those who don't know what a flight ch a check or flight test is, it's for those who want to get their license. You are the sort of the teacher, or the tester, the tester, who then can provide the yeah. pass or fail grade. After after learning to fly and realizing that, uh, and when I graduated from college with a, a degree in, in English literature, um, uh, I, I remember going to an interview down here on Broadway for an advertising copywriter job, and I. I knew I had the job here. The room was gray, <laughs> the men had gray hair, they were in gray suits, um, gray words were coming out of their mouth. <laughs> and and the, the man said, we'll be in touch. And, and I felt confident that I had the job. And I remember walking down the stairs onto Broadway and sitting on the curb and thinking really, really hard. You know how your life goes like this yes, at some point? Yeah. And, and I thought, I can't do this. And I, I raced over and got my Volkswagen and drove out Columbia Parkway and begged for a job. I had a flight instructor's rating by then. Wow. And, um, but, you know, only about 200 hours, so I was a neophyte. But <laughs> for the next um, 6,000 hours, I instructed, had a flying school. And, and I never regretted not being never an advertising copy. <laughs> and what, what um, I mean, what courage to make that decision? Oh, I don't think it was courage. I think what it was, was it? I think it was, I, I knew that that wasn't for me. Beyond a doubt. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, does that that's make it one easier? Of the, it's one of the, that's one of the blessings and it's a thing I pray for, uh, particularly, you know, with my, my grand nieces and nephews and, and young people. Uh, we hear so often, follow your dream. Yes, this is what, exactly what we need to hear, yeah. And, and there's, there isn't a truer statement. The corollary of that, the, the problem with that is finding a dream. And I was fortunate enough to, to be absolutely head over heels in love with flying airplanes. And, you know, um, not everybody is. I, right. I, I feel like it's, it's sometimes feel like it's, it's a trite thing to say, follow your dream, follow your dream. Well, I don't have a dream. Well, maybe the answer is search. Don't yes. give up. Just go with, you know, what your heart tells you and don't, don't uh, stop looking. And when you find something, don't let go of it. Awesome. Okay, let me take you back to age nine. When you, because we talked about, it's wonderful that you had this dream, this passion, would you call it a passion as well? And it, it bit you at nine. And how? It, was it, is it a dream? A there, was a, there was a movie. It was, I think it was new, newly out, and it was called The, the Bridges at Tokori, and I'm sure you can watch it on the movie channel. Or, you know, <laughs> but um, it was about flying jets off a, a carrier in, mm -hmm. into Korea in, um, in, during the Korean War. But the scenes of those jets flying, and they did some beautiful scenes, and then, and then down through these valleys, and this picture of flight, I mean, that was the seminal moment. And I mean that. I, I don't think remember. I talked about airplanes or thought about them before then. And when I came home from that, that movie, I, it was night. I looked out the window and I said to the sky, I'm going to be there. I'm going to do this <laughs> at night. Yeah. Wow, at night. And then your life had a trajectory from that point on. Yeah, with lots of... Uh, twists and turns. Sure. Lots. Well, and see, that's the thing. And now, I mean, the ratings, I can't even memorize them because you have so many. I mean, you have multi-engine, land and sea, 
hot air balloon. I mean, you uh, this Lockheed DC-3, SA-227. I don't even know what half of this is. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's the, just incredible. The way ratings work is that you, in the FAA has private instrument ratings, commercial ratings, single engine land, multi-engine land, single engine C, multi-engine right. C, balloons. You've basically got them all. And an airline transport yeah. rating, yes. Yeah. And then there are particular type ratings in larger or, or turbojet aircraft, and that's what the DC-3 and the SA-227, SA-227 is a turboprop, which right. was that old cigar long thing that right. Tom Air used to fly. But the DC-3 is, is of course, my first love, and it's the one I, I'll be flying one this weekend down oh. in Knoxville giving a flight check. So. Incredible, yeah, incredible, because I know you did, I, I read that you donated this uh, this picture to Union Terminal, this DC-3, this sort of long ago. Maybe you did, <laughs> I didn't know. There was an article about some, some tribute, doesn't matter. That's, yeah, no. But, but back to that moment, the moment, because then you said twists and turns. So what do you do, what does one do if one has a passion, but the twists and turns discourage? Do you know, you have to have, you have this unwavering knowing. Does, I mean, what happens? You have this well, it's sort of, well, is it still my passion? Or it, is it still, I mean, did you have those moments that, well, I don't know if I can, I, I need the signature of my parents or financial constraints. I mean, I'm sure there were some of these bumps along the way. Well, the first bump was that the first lesson I took, um, and I still correspond with the man who taught me to fly. He lives in Bangkok. He's a retired Delta captain who at age 74 just had a son. Anyway, Larry <laughs> was quite a guy. And, wow. <laughs> but I have to say on the first, uh, first flying lesson, it was on a wintry day in, in December, I was terrified. I was terrified. And my sister, who is a much um, less forceful person than I am, thought it was great. And I remember thinking, I can't let her know that I was terrified. Well, it didn't take more than, you know, another hour or so to, to get over that terror. But it wasn't, oh, wow, this is, you know, this is, yes. Yeah, this finally, is I'm it. living it was, the path. Oh, I what my I to God, do, right. what am I doing oh, well, This is what I wanted to do? But how long did it take to get over that? Maybe an hour. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I mean, what, what, what twists and turns could you well, share with people okay, so that they can yeah. identify um, with you? That's, you getting know. the ratings, you know, was get the, the licenses and the ratings was, it, was, it took a lot of work. It took a lot of study to take the written exams and to, yes. and to take the flight tests. But I have to say this, and this is something I worry about. In those, in those years, there was, I don't know how else to say it, but a social network, a family. There were people uh, at the airport who, we became friends, fast friends. Yeah. I mean, we're still friends 50 yes. years later. Yes. And uh, that group of people made, made things much more fun, much, yes. much more yes. fun. Um, I, I gave a flight test just Oh, a week ago, it was a Sunday morning, and there was nobody on the airport when, when I met the, the man, and we did the oral portion, and we did the flight portion, and you know, four hours later, we came back, and I handed him a certificate, and there was nobody around, and I thought, you know, I'm not sure I would have been able to stick with this if it had been this sterile, Yeah. and that, that bothers me. Um, I, I know what you mean. I, I'll tell you, I, I, I fly helicopters, and when I passed the written test, which was oh, so hard, you fly helicopters. I laid on the ground and I cried in front of everyone that was. I just and they, all laugh, they said, I understand. Yeah, I know yeah. this is yeah. not easy. Yeah. but I and they were happy that so. <laughs> I mean, I was like, I passed, I passed, I passed, I passed first time. Now that first that time is very they, large. I, I am hard. all thumbs and all all. It toes was hard. It was hard, but but the thing is, I understand the camaraderie. You know, they all sort of. Support. Love the fact yeah. that they were, you know, that when I once I showed the emotion, they were all like, "Hey, let's go to lunch." Oh, but everyone was quite absolutely. to their own, and and yeah. it was not what you said. The and family then, was not there. In 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 this life, in in this in this goal, um, and I'm sure this is true in anything. There, you're gonna you're gonna meet roadblocks. And uh, I remember when I went to work for the FAA, somebody saw that I had a DC three type rating. Well, you know. DC-3 was built in 1935, and it's a great big, huge, heavy airplane, but it's not a jet. And they sent me to what was called Jet Eval in wow. Oklahoma City. I went out there, and I thought, oh, you know, I'll be flying some little jet and learn how to, how to, this is just sort of 
to see if you were going to be qualified. Right. <laughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> they put me in a DC-9, which wow. is like an MD-80. I Small but mighty. <laughs> no idea. I mean, yeah. that I could start the thing and wow. taxi. And the guy said to me after two days, I don't think by tomorrow you're going to have the uh, um, skills, the ATP, airline transport rating level skills that you need to have to pass this course. And I said, you are absolutely right, I'm not. Later on, I was I was disappointed and, and upset, angry with the FAA for having done it. It was it was in, and it was not a logical thing to do. Right. But I know that feeling of failure. Yes. I, I know it, and yeah. and when I give a, a, a test, you know, I try very very hard to yeah. to to understand and be empathetic. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And just say to somebody, hey, if there's a problem, let's find it here yeah. rather than. Well, let me ask you this too. Uh, um, if someone doesn't know, because I, I love the way you said you were blessed to know that you had a knowing, you had a passion. What if, you, what if you, your nieces or nephews or you said the people that you know don't? Or they feel like they don't and they're searching. Or they get into the wrong. Yeah, so what's, do you have any sort of advice as far as how to search, what to do? What do Pray. you start? Pray? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. You know, be honest with yourself okay. about about where your talents and, and your your interests are. Uh, there are there are so many things to get into, so many fields to, to pursue. There are so many more opportunities now. I think in schools to help direct kids. Sometimes into that's a problem. Do you think? Oh yeah. I, I think yeah. it makes it confusing, yeah. and then there's people that want to play. There's and so then many there's choices. parents who, who who want you to do, you know, want you. My, my parents thought, this is crazy. You, you know, you have a, a degree in in something that has nothing to do. Well, but early on, you know, I knew. For instance, in high school, I refused to learn how to type because I didn't want to be a secretary. And in college, <laughs> I refused to take any education courses so I wouldn't become a teacher. Bad Stubborn move with will. typing. Bad <laughs> move. Computers came in, and I'm still. That's you know, I write for this magazine. And I'm still typing like I can go pretty fast with two fingers. But uh, y yeah, don't don't let somebody push you into something. Sometimes yes. you it's never too late to change either. That's right. Always always feel that you can change. And how much does luck have to do with it? What, do you believe in luck? Oh yes. Do you I'm make not your sure. luck, or do you believe in luck? Uh, <laughs> because I, did you make it? I mean, you, it sounds like you had a will. I did, but you know, I did some silly things, some stupid things, some, some, I made some mistakes. Um, and I'm not talking about big philosophical ones, I'm talking about mistakes in flying airplanes. And that I didn't kill myself <laughs> is... Pretty lucky? Was very lucky, <laughs> yes. Very. And I'm, I'm not sure, I do believe in luck, but I, I also believe in, uh, in uh, God's will and things, you know, it wasn't yes. my time. Yes. Okay, so I think people always want to know, I mean, it's amazing. Here you're so interested in, in flying and from the age, I mean, basically you're in diapers for goodness sakes. And then you have this name, Lunkin. So do you care to, how does destiny marry you with Cincinnati's airport, which is really the first airport before CBG? I, I usually tell people they name me after the airport. Yeah, of course. But they they, 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 they <laughs> take them a while to process it. Uh, do you know, um, okay, when I had a flying school at Lunkin Airport, I used to see this P-51, Flava P-51 is a World War II vintage, wonderful yeah. fighter airplane. It was blue and white and it was gorgeous. And then I heard that this fabulous man named Abby Lunkin flew it. <laughs> so had we love story yeah well somebody yes. introduced us and I had been in part of this college career I had spent six months with TWA as a hostess as a stewardess these days TWA, flight attendant. oh my god yeah. remember those days oh so yes. Abby was was putting together a, a, an airline and he asked if I would work for him for the summer and I did and we fell madly in love well, there and, you go and we're engaged the trouble was, he was 30 years older than I was. Oh, and oh, you W. He, yeah, well, but my God, he was <laughs> Howard Hughes. You know, he, he really yeah. was. He was handsome. He flew Isn't this B-51. Awesome? I loved him. Um, our families were socially, you know, there was 
yeah. a huge difference, age difference. Yeah. He had been divorced. Well, the, long story short, 10 years went by and we were very close. We were an item. Um, we worked together. And finally, uh, when I was 31, we were married. And it didn't survive the pressures. Yeah. Of but it. you got the name, Martha. You got well, the name. And, but I, I have to tell you this, Jennifer. <laughs> when I, you know, John Denver. John yes. Denver's real name is John Gottelschmidt or something like that. I, I right. met his father in Chicago. Okay, he loved the name Denver. When we were divorced, I thought about it and I thought, you know, <laughs> I love this airport. This airport is, is, is my home. It I is. mean, this is where I done my thing and, and I decided to keep the name plus a lot of people by that time in the business knew me by that name it so. suits you so well you are flight you are society. well but people Earhart, say, does that oh I you? know <laughs> you know I know I know uh, one of the Lunkin you know and I say no I'm, I'm not I'm not it's by marriage you know, yes it's uh, uh, but but yes the, the name has and it's, you know, London is known worldwide. It is. It so is. And it was the premier airport. It, it was. was the premier airport. Yes. It was the largest municipal airport in the world. Well, and, and what, what are your plans for the future? I mean, you're always so moving and shaking. People know you. I mean, you come, we, I go to London and people are like, oh, yeah, Martha, 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 uh, Martha. What's, what's in store for Martha? I, I don't know. I, you know, I, I write a column for a, for a magazine. So Flying magazine. Yes. yes. And that, that's Super, super fun. funny and fun. Your articles are great. Th so so that, takes, that takes a good bit of time. I like to fly uh, f for fun. I, I, I like giving the check rides. I do the... the Part 135 air taxi check rides. Part 125 for ram down. So, so these are these are these are businesses. Then the, the individual people who you fly with. Um, I just want to keep doing what I do. Learn to fly different kind. Maybe be, maybe learn to fly a helicopter. I don't know. <laughs> that would be right. that would be large. <laughs> it's rock star. And and what about what about when people say about Cincinnati that. Uh, because there's always this sort of saying, and people move out of Cincinnati, but I think there's a lot to be proud of, and we're trying to highlight successful yeah, stories you know, like you. And there's so many th wonderful, wonderful things about, and people, and the unknowns that we know that are now, uh, we're trying to highlight it. You're one of them. I mean, wow. I mean, you, what you wonderful can, story you are. Well, you know, you have to go where life leads you, in a way. And, and I left for... I was in Chicago for five years and in Annapolis for four before I came back That's with right. the FAA. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and those, in a way, those were kind of painful years. No, in a way, they sucked. <laughs> they were just awful. They, yeah. uh, but, but that was a hang on by your fingernails and grit it out and, you know, you, you'll get back. But they you, made you who you be. are. They gave you that, yeah, that yeah. yes, that experience. But, uh, you know, what, what we have to offer here in, in terms of education and formal formal education and things like flying any endeavor you want you can you can learn it here you may have to go somewhere else for a time uh, uh, to develop those skills to, to follow a job but Cincinnati has a strong pull on people I remember an old PNG pilot who was from Milan Michigan he said to me one time I don't understand it all you people from Cincinnati always you always want to come back home. You always yes. want to stay. Well, I understand. I think you do too. It is. It it's is a, true. It's a yes. great city. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and uh, it has its problems. I couldn't get out of my street Every this city morning has its problems. because of the construction on the streets. But <laughs> yes, um, but yes, it's it's a it's a good place. Good people. Do you think there's a formula for success? Be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. Yeah, I think that's. That's the key to it. It will keep you from um, painting yourself as something you're not, and, and you, can't, you can't survive happily that way. And that's really what's tied to happiness. Do you think that's, yes, that's I what do. really? I, re I really do. You, you, know, you might not be the greatest, or the, but, but mm. if you're, to, you know, what is it? To thine own self be true, but really be, be honest with yourself. Well, and that's a good point, and I think what you brought up about you don't have to be the greatest, because I think what people think of success is you have to be the top of no, whatever that is, no. and I think that you have to know you tried your best. 
Yeah. At the end of the day, you have, and, and there will be days when you didn't, and you say, I screwed up, you know, but, but if you can say, I did, I did my best, I gave it everything I had, for me, that's success. Yes. Thank you, Martha, and thank you for being Cincinnati's finest. Thank you I wish so you'd told me about the helicopters. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me what made you get the helicopter. helicopters. Button. Because I loved the fact, my, my father was an aerospace engineer. Okay. So he, he tested engines all the time, my whole he life. He should have told you helicopters don't work. There well, he never, I parts. never ever was in a her, helicopter ever in my life. But I was around engines and airplanes and always, you know, the magazines were on the spread. And when we lived in England, my, my brother got his glider license. Okay. He was a Royal, uh, uh, Royal Air Force okay. glider license. But the girls were never really. Uh, no, the girl, no. No, it was just for the, for the boys. Which, actually, I didn't ask you that question, because being a girl, well, we'll get to that in a second. But um, when I got older, so I was dating someone who picked me up in a helicopter, and I thought, oh, that was, the, that was my oh, pivotal moment. Smart. I yes. had that moment. I never, ever, I can never, still taste, never smell. There was never a second thought. There was, I, yeah. I was at one yeah. with the sky, and I could still be on the ground. I was right in that moment, that time, that area, because I've been in planes all my life. I've flown weekly, monthly, whatever. But this was different. This was it. This was it. Mm -hmm. I, I, when mm -hmm. I landed, I was moved. I was, I was never the same. And I thought, that's what I want to so do. I want to fly difficult. a helicopter. I mean, th no. the, the specifics might be difficult, but there's no. Can I tell you, um, the instructor, when I called Stratus the next day, I called the next day and he, he told me the price. I'm like, oh my God. And then he said, do you realize this is harder than fixed wing? Do you realize there's no, there's hardly any women, there's no women in Ohio. I said, I, I wasn't even listening. I was going in one ear and out the other. And, and, I, and I thought, when can I get in? Mm -hmm. He said, well, I've got to mm -hmm. do And mm -hmm. I went in and he, after a week of flying, he's like, he, he looked at me seriously. This, he said, yes, you're serious. You're, you're pretty damn good. And I am, um, I have 37 hours now and I'm that's, almost solo. Oh, that's great. That's, <laughs> I'm almost solo. Great. It's incredible. And I passed my, my written uh, first which is, time. Which I is got, the most difficult I part. I passed yeah. it, and the other guys in my class all failed. I want you to say, and I feel sorry for you, but still, <laughs> I'm the girl, and I, and I passed. And I'm really, it was meant to be. It was really awesome. I love it. I love it. So being a girl, and I know it, it was a touchy thing, but you, it doesn't matter whether you're a girl or boy. Oh, absolutely You're a person, not. and it doesn't matter, but you're still a stigma a little bit. People keep <laughs> asking. You know, I, I, you've heard this. Yeah. And I get it all the time. Oh, you were a pioneer in a time when we... Bull feathers. I never <laughs> encountered a, a, a situation where being a woman was a penalty. Yes. And, uh, and you know, I can honestly say now to anybody who, 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 when the discussion comes up, I can fly better than any of you guys, and you know it. <laughs> you know, and, you, I don't... I. I think women have, if anything, a leg up. Corporations are, are uh, yeah. anxious to hire women. They're more in intuitive. Jobs. They're more in touch with yes. And, and that's a good point, especially yes. when it comes to, especially when it comes to instructing. Yes. Women make wonderful flight instructors. They do, and they're lighter normally, and they're better yeah. on the flight. Yeah. Yes, it's true. Yeah. It's there's, true. there's just a, a, a different, uh, a more patient um, uh, quality. I, I you know, I know when a, when an applicant comes to me, I almost know before he gets there <gasps> oh, Martha. what his chances are <laughs> from his flight instructor. And there's yes. a, an operator in particular, and I worry, you know, I think, oh, did, I, I hope she's, <laughs> so, she's so yeah, yeah. I, ho I hope France is, she's British, I hope France is, was <laughs> <laughs> right, was the instructor. <laughs> no, it's great, it's great. Come find yourself. The world needs you, all of you. Are you willing to wait? Are you ready?